now it's working, I think. Um, so let's see. Can you see my slides in full screen now? Yes. OK, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, I hope that you can hear me well. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, uh, well, I'm really glad also to, to see you all, uh, even though remotely. And, um, and uh, yeah, today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, uh, tell you something about a work that I started a long time ago as a side project uh, of uh, Umberto Giuriato while he was doing his master thesis. So uh, I think four years ago now. And then, and then Umberto moved to Nice where he did his PhD and he, in, and he defended his PhD recently. Uh, and, and, and this work has, has, has stayed there in the drawer a bit. And, and maybe this is a good time to, to try to finish it. So I thought that that was a, um, a good um, a good audience to uh, to to tell you a, a bit more about what we did and and also to give a bit of feedback uh, to get a, a bit of feedback from you uh, which are working in quantum fluids because this this is a work that it's really at the interface be between uh, uh, well quantum fluids because it deals with the gross Pitayevsky model but also uh, what is called the wave turbulence theory, which is more a theory, just like a statistical mechanics theory of, of waves. So it's more like a fundamental mathematical theory that not necessarily apply to, to quantum fluids. Uh, so yeah, I, um, I encourage you to, to ask me a question even, even while I'm giving the seminar, if you want, instead of waiting uh, the last, uh, the end of the talk, please. Uh, but yes, this is going to be the outline of the talk. So, so I, I think I don't have to introduce, uh, to spend too much time on, on introducing the gross Pitayevsky equation. However, I will just mention it uh, to you uh, so that you, you, you can follow my, my notation. Uh, and then I will give you a brief idea of what is this uh, wave turbulence theory, for those of you that are not familiar with, uh, and how you can apply, to, uh, apply it to the gross Pitayevsky model. And then I'm going to show you the, the main results that we obtained with uh, that Umberto obtained. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to mention some 3D results that I obtained while I was doing my PhD, and then and then I will move to, to the results that Umberto obtained, uh, which are on Bogolyubov turbulence. Uh, yeah. So what is the model that I'm going to uh, use today? Uh, well, it's the gross Pitayevsky equation, which is uh, sometimes also known as the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Um, can you see my mouse? Yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, usually uh, for, um, let's say, experimental physicists working with, uh, with BEC, they, 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 they write the GP model uh, using these this, uh, dimensional constants. Uh, so essentially, this is a, a, a nonlinear version of the Schrodinger equation that model the order parameter of a Bose-Einstein condensate. You've got a kinetic term, and then you've got a nonlinear term, which is given by the uh, um, binary collisions of the dilute atomic gases that are cooled down below Bose-Einstein condensation. And then here you might consider some also some external potential that confine the uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. Now, um, in, in, in the talk, I'm going to skip the difficulties of having a confining external potential. So I'm going to consider, let's say, a periodic system. Uh, with some particular scale, uh, um, periodic side L. Uh, so this term uh, cancel. And I'm also going to use uh, a rescaled, ver rescaled version, non-dimensionalized version of the gross BTS equation, where essentially scales and times uh, and densities have been rescaled so that you've got a nice uh, equation with the uh, unitary constants. And um, the important thing to, to notice that when, when you do this rescaling, uh, effectively you are introducing a, a, a land scales in the system, which is the unique uh, land scale, inherent land scale of the, of the system, which is called the healing length, which is given by, by, by this formula here. And, and uh, for what is important of what I'm gonna say, essentially the healing length tells you when the second term or the third term of the equation uh, wins against the other. So at scales much, much larger than the healing length, 
so for very large waves. The second, ter the third term is uh, is dominant, and so you have uh, let's say phononic uh, waves. While at scales much smaller than the Healy length, the, the second terms, the kinetic term, uh, usually wins and it's dominant. So, so you have, you've got dispersive waves, uh, free, free, free particle waves in the system. Okay, uh, so why, why people working in, in wave turbulence theory like this equation? Well, because uh, uh, this equation conserves some, uh, has cons some conserved quantities. In particular, it, it conserves the well, it, it conserves the energy, or you can define a Hamiltonian uh, describing the system, and it, you also conserve the total number of particles or the mass of the system, depending on how, how you want to call it. And this is a nonlinear PD, uh, which is dispersive. So it's, it has all the ingredients that you might want to have uh, to, to apply this uh, wave turbulence theory approach to it. All right. So what is, uh, in a nutshell, the wave turbulence theory? So you, you have to think of it as a kind of statistical mechanics approach uh, to waves. So imagine that you have a uh, very complicated system uh, described by waves, a little bit like the picture that I've put it in here. You've got waves at different scales. Uh, and, these, and you assume that those waves, they non-linearly interact with each other. Um, well, maybe this picture is a bit extreme because, uh, well, there are not only waves, but there are also some more complicated structures emerging. But let's suppose that you are in a weakly non-linear dispersive uh, uh, regime. Um, you can you can try to 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 describe it using uh, a statistical mechanical approach, which is exactly the wave turbulence theory. And uh, the, 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 the word turbulence means in that sense that you are doing some kind of statistical average to it. And you imagine that uh, energy, uh, well, waves are, are excited at different, at many, many uh, different uh, scales of the system. And uh, yeah, this theory uh, works for any nonlinear dispersive system. So you can apply it to optics, plasma, ocean, but here we are, we're targeting both Einstein condensates. And the, the, the main, the main uh, thing that you have to remember when, when you try to apply this theory is that Essentially, the theory tells you that the only efficient energy transfer uh, due to this wave-wave interaction, um, nonlinear wave interaction, uh, happens uh, uh, is mediated only by uh, what are called the resonant n-wave interac interaction processes. So, not not all the waves interacting they they do transfer energy efficiently, but only a smaller fraction of them which lives in this in what is called the resonant manifold and this resonant manifold satisfy some kind of equation a little bit like that so you have something that resemble a bit the um, uh, conservation of uh, of uh, linear momentum in a, in a collision of waves and something that resembles a little bit like the conservation of the energy in a, in, in a collision. Uh, but here, instead of writing energy, you write the um, dispersion of, of the waves. Oh. OK, and um, so these, these type of equation, well, de depending on the, on the uh, system that you look at, you might have different uh, wave interaction. So, so in the case of the uh, Gross-Pitayeski or the nolino schrodinger equation, the simplest, simplest possible um, interaction that you might have is a four-wave uh, interaction. And uh, let me uh, tell you why, why this is so. So if you, if you think about taking the gross pitayeski equation and rewriting it in Fourier space, uh, then, for example, by, by uh, rewriting the field psi in, in, in its Fourier transform, then uh, the gross pitayeski equation uh, will be matched, will, will, will be recast into an equation that looks a little bit like that. So this is telling you that uh, uh, someone is throwing snowballs at my window. Just a second. <laughs> Just a second. Maybe I could use this moment to say that if you want to ask something, um, please 
say so in the chat and I can I can try to uh, organize it. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I am back. I think that this is this is due to the fact that it has been a snowy well two two or three snowy days in a row in Norwich. So everyone is excited about the snow. <laughs> okay, so I'm back and. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is that you can recast the gross pitesque equation in, in, in Fourier space. And uh, uh, this equation is written like that. And it tells you essentially that if you, if you imagine uh, that you're looking at an evolution of a wave with a given wave number, let's call it K1. So these will evolve accordingly to its angular velocity, angular frequency. And here there's a typo, it should be K1. So the, the, the evolution of the wave uh, following its normal linear dispersion relation, but then this wave is gonna also interact due to the cubic, cubic nonlinearity of the equation with other three waves. Let's call them K2, K3, and K4. And this interaction uh, must satisfy some conservation of linear momentum between the waves. So this the Dirac delta function. So effectively in the, uh, at, at any time, it's a single wave number interacts with other three. Uh, and, that's, and that's why you, you might have some, some mixing of the energy and other conserved quantities into the system. Um, so then uh, how, how, to, uh, um, how to understand this, this better? Well, for, for example, very, very naively, you could, you could think, well, here I've got an evolution equation for a unique wave function, um, uh, wave. And that depends on three other waves. So I might seek for a, an evolution equation of three waves. And then you will find out that these will then be uh, a function of five waves. And then th those five waves will be, will be a function of seven waves and so on. So you've got a hierarchy that is not closed. And, and you need to find, a, you need to find well, to, to, to assume, to, to give some assumption in order to close this nonlinear hierarchy, a little bit like, uh, what you do in classical turbulence, for example. So uh, in, wave, in, in, wave, in the wave turbulence theory, you assume that the nonlinearity is weak. So you assume that this term at the right-hand side is weak compared to the, to the other terms. And, uh, and you do some statistical average over, over your uh, uh, waves uh, by writing them as an amplitude and a phase, and you average over all the phases. And, and the idea is that you, you write the um, uh, higher order correlate, correlators of your wave averages. So for example, uh, the fourth order cor correlators. So, so let's say two waves interacting with other two waves as a product of a, a second order correlators and so on. And, this, and, and in this way, somehow you're, you're able to close the uh, otherwise not closed hierarchy and to come up with what is called a kinetic equation that tells you what is the evolution of uh, the spect of something that is um, uh, proportional to the spectrum of the system. So you go from, from a uh, non-closed um, uh, PDEs, uh, fully nonlinear PDEs written in, in Fourier space to something that is closed uh, after making some, some statistical assumption, uh, but, uh, um, uh, and, and follows a kinetic equation that, that has some interesting properties. Um, yeah, let me move onwards. So in the case of uh, what the, the first type of limit that you can have in the gross PTSK equation is uh, uh, the so-called four-wave kinetic equation limit where uh, essentially this nonlinear term is small. So this means that there is not a strong wave uh, present in the system. So all waves are, are uh, equally pr present. So that means that you, you don't have to imagine that you have a strong condensate on the top of the system plus some small fluctuation, but the system is really described by a superposition of all incoherent waves. So in this limit here, the kinetic equation that you can derive with the wave turbulence theory looks like that. So N is, is something proportional to the spectrum of the wave. So it tells you that basically the evolution of the spectrum in time is given by some kind of collision integral, which is very similar to the Boltzmann collision integral. If you, if you remember a bit of um, a kinetic theory of gases, uh, the integrand of this integral is slightly different compared to the standard Boltzmann integral for, for, for gases. 
So effectively, you have some kind of interaction that is mediated here by some conservation uh, of the wave number, but also some conservation of the angular frequency. So this, this is the kinetic equation that tells you that this type of nonlinear interaction between the, the modes of the system um, is only efficient when, when these two delta functions are satisfied, which, is, which, which are indeed the resonant manifold of, of this particular system. So in this case, when, when you are in the uh, De Broglie limit, so, so no, no, no strong condensate present, uh, the interaction is, is a two waves going to, into two wave interaction, and the resonant um, manifold is dictated by these uh, 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 relations where the angular frequency is, is proportional to k, to k squared. Uh, interestingly, this um, kinetic equation is no more time reversible, differently from, from the gross pitayevsky equation, which is formally time reversible. So this is a time irreversible equation. You can prove that there exists a, um, a entropy function that you can associate to that. And uh, uh, you, you can prove that one of the solution of this, equa of, of this equation, one of the steady solution of this equation is uh, uh, the called rayleigh genes distribution, which is the, the equilibrium, uh, this, 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 the standard thermodynamic equilibrium distribution for this uh, uh, wave equation. Uh, but once you discover this type of equation here, you, you can also seek for out of equilibrium solutions. And these are known in this, in this field as kolmogorov zakharov solutions. Um, and they are interesting solution because they, their solution, their steady, their out of equilibrium steady state solution, that they carry some flux of energy or other conserved quantities through the scales of the system. Let me give you an example of what we have in mind in the case of these uh, Bose fluid. So imagine that we have a Bose fluid where we, we assume that there is still not yet a strong condensate, so a, a zero mode presence in the, in the system. So this is like a very cold um, system made of, of the Broglie uh, waves, uh, but uh, energy is, is excited at all scales. And we imagine that we constantly have a flux of a wave, or let's say a flux of particles with some wave number and energy entering in, in this uh, Bose fluid. And let's suppose that for the moment that at the same time, we're able to remove high energy uh, waves at a very small momentum, um, a small scale. Uh, and we can also uh, remove at the same time uh, particles, waves at a very large momentum. So we have a way of forcing the system and removing energy far away at, at two different landscapes of the system. So if you look at the, uh, what we're doing in the uh, uh, spectrum of, 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 of this type of uh, thought experiments, we are forcing somehow at some intermediate scale and we're re removing particles, uh, waves at very, uh, very small scales, so very large k and at very uh, uh, small k, so large scales. So in, if you are in such a condition, you can actually prove that some of the solution of this kinetic equation, they look like a power laws. They're very similar to power laws that you have in classical turbulence. That's why they're called Kolmogorov uh, um, solutions, but they're called Kolmogorov Zakharov solution because Zakharov was actually the mathematician that found those solutions for this kinetic equation. And in, in the case of the gross equation, you have two different type of cascades you have a direct energy cascade. So this is telling you that the energy is cascading uh, towards smaller and smaller cascades. But at the same time, you can also have inverse particle cascades. So, so you, you accumulate more and more waves, more and more particle at large, large scales. And this is effectively what creates finally a condensate at the smallest scale of the system, if you don't halt it with some kind of dissipation. So we did some, some simulation in uh, long ago while, while I was doing my PhD in 2009, we did some simulation this type of this system in this type of regime. And we indeed found that if you, if you are able to introduce some kind of uh, friction or some kind of uh, um, um, uh, dissipative scales or large scales, then you can build this type of cascades and they look 
in 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 free space in the spectrum something proportional to what you would expect from the Kolmogorov Zakharov solution. Well, I I would say that they look like because here we don't really have a lot of uh, um, um, decades in in the system because the simulations are quite in, uh, challenging in 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 three dimension. All right, so um, this is the picture that you have when you don't have a condensate. So when you're, let's say, building your, your condensate through the inverse cascade, you might end up with this type of trigonometry. But there is another interesting um, regime, which is the one that I want to tell you more about today, which is the opposite regime. So, you, and, and it's usually in, called the Bogolyubov uh, turbulent regime, which is the regime where you have already a strong condensate. So you essentially have an almost steady uh, quantum fluid, an almost steady bose einstein condensate, or, or let's say superfluid with some kind of constant density. And then on top of this constant density, you perturb it with some little fluctuations. And you can call, and, and you call those Bogolyubov fluctuations because Bogolyubov was, was the one describing those fluctuations and finding the angular, um, uh, well, the dispersion relation of those fluctuations, both uh, both in, in the mean field limit and, 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 and in the fully quantum limit. So if you are in this, in this regime where you have a strong condensate and then some little fluctuations, you can uh, write your, um, you can write an ansatz for, for your um, Grosbytesk equation by saying that your field psi is, uh, uh, I'll say, given by some, the square root of some density, uniform density, plus some small fluctuation phi. And then if you develop in, in the small fluctuation phi, so if you, if you assume that those fluctuations are, let's say, infinitesimally, and you develop in, in epsilon, you can, uh, you, you can obtain a, a, a new uh, uh, nonlinear PDEs for the fluctuations, which is slightly different from the uh, gross Pitaeus equation, because it has no more a cubic nonlinearity, but is, it has a quadratic nonlinearity. So that means that instead of having four wave interaction, two waves going to, into two waves, uh, like in the previous limit, you've got a three wave interaction system. So you, you have essentially one Bogolyubov wave that interacts and creates two Bogolyubov wave or the opposite, two Bogolyubov wave interact, in, interacting, cre uh, creating a single Bogolyubov excitation. Um, again, because if you are in this weakly nonlinear regime, you can still apply the word turbulence theory is a bit more complicated in here. Uh, I skipped all, all of the details, but the, the important ingredient is that you need to take, you need to remember that now you have a slightly different dispersion relation for the excitation, which looks like that. Uh, this is the Bokulubo dispersion. And uh, due to the fact that you have three wave resonant interaction, also the kinetic equation that you can derive is slightly different. So it involves uh, uh, a slightly different, uh, um, slightly different um, integrands. And here there is a typo because there should be only three waves in here. There should be something like delta omega one plus omega two minus omega three without the omega four and without the K four. So it should involve only three waves res uh, resonances. Okay, so you can, you can look for equilibrium states again, uh, and you can look for out of equilibrium states. So those kind of uh, kolmogorov zakharov solutions of this equation. Um, and you can indeed find, find those. Well, in this, in, in this case, there's only one cascade. The energy cascades toward, toward the small scales. You can formally find the power law exponent for such a cascade, which uh, should be k to the minus seven over two for this particular cascade. Now, I'm cheating a little bit because uh, formally uh, mathematicians, they do not, they don't really know how to write down these, these equation in the large scale limit. So when, when waves are really um, dominated by only phonons. So when, when K are so small that this term is negligible compared to this one. So in this case, when you have only phononic waves in, interacting, it is, uh, it is formally impossible to, to, to derive properly in a consistent way a, um, a um, kinetic equation. And, uh, and that's why somehow we, we, we got interested into, in, into, into this, this problem. So really trying to, to see how, how waves interact and how waves uh, evolve when, when you're considering waves that are so large that are almost entirely phononic. 
Okay. Um, and there is also another justification. So recently, uh, um, some ex experimental group working in BC have started really trying to uh, uh, probe these uh, wave turbulence uh, uh, in, in both ends and condensates, uh, in particular the group in uh, Cambridge, um, uh, and, and in particular uh, Nir Navon and, and collaborators, they, they were able to create, let's say, bose einstein condensate in a, uh, um, in a can, and this, this is how, how, how they call it, and then they were able to shake this can and, and they observed these uh, uh, type of turbulence that you can obtain by shaking the can and then by lowering a bit the confining potential so that you can let the very energetic waves escape only. So you can, uh, you can create a sort of synthetic dissipation into the system so that you can effectively build some kind of uh, um, stationary out of equilibrium state in the system. Uh, they did some simulation, they did some experiment, they measured some spectra which are 3.5, which are uh, somehow close to the prediction of the wave turbulence, even though the scaling at which they look at that, compared to the healing length, they, they seem to be in the opposite regime. So there's, there's something that uh, seems to me at least that do not match perfectly with, with what the wave turbulence theory uh, would, would, uh, would expect. Anyway, I mean, it's really interesting that, that experimentalists are able to to do um, experiment on this type of turbulence nowadays. Okay, so that was the motivation. Now, um, let me tell you briefly in maybe the last 10, 10 minutes, what, what are the numerical sim simulations that we did? So uh, we used a kind of force dissipated version of the gross Pitayeski model. And for simplicity, we did the, the simulation in 2D to, to keep our life simple. And also because in 2D, um, well, because there are experimentalists uh, in, that in 2D are able to implement uh, this type, the type of forcing that we, that, we, that we model in our system. So imagine to have the standard gross beta esque equation and then at the right hand side, we, we introduce some forcing term, which is this one. And then we introduce some effective dissipation term. And the forcing term is, is a forcing operator that represent what is called a kick rotor uh, forcing term. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with that, like, like, uh, like myself, but I was, I, I, I was not. So a kick rotor is, is effectively something, a forcing mechanism that you kick every, every period uh, capital T. So you give, you give like a kick to the system at, uh, uh, at, after every period uh, capital T. And the type of kick that you give to the system is at a particular um, uh, wave, uh, um, uh, wave number. So in this case, we essentially give a kick at some wave number k star in the x direction and some wave number, uh, and the same wave number k star in the y direction. So we effectively, we choose an harmonic of the system and we keep forcing to that harmonic uh, at, at, some, um, at some given period in time. And uh, we force in a, in, a, in a kind of random way because we, the forcing, um, uh, the forcing uh, um, phases are randomly distributed. So if sometimes we kick, well, we always kick on the same harmonic, but not at the same position effectively. And also we introduce some dissipative operator at a very large scale, uh, at very small scales, uh, a little bit like mimicking the uh, synthetic dissipation that is uh, in, that is uh, introduced in the experiments that I've just mentioned. So we are able to dissipate very energetic waves in such a way. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a video showing you what's, what's happening in the system. So it, this is the density plot of our initial system is a 2D uh, GP equation. So what you see here in yellowish color is the density. And uh, remember that our system is, is periodic. So when we turn on these uh, um, forcing, uh, in this particular case, we're exciting the eighth mode of the system. So the eighth harmonic of the system, you clearly see that, uh, well, um, there's not really much going on at the beginning. So you still see that effectively the, the, the main excitation of the system remains something which is around the eighth harmonic. So you, you, 
you see some, some stripes, both in the X direction and the Y direction, which are separated, and they're all a, in the A harmonic. But after a while, if you keep forcing, if you keep forcing, then something is, is happening. So there are more and more like solitary wave structures, maybe vortex dipoles appearing, Robert Jones solitons appearing, and the uh, symmetry is somehow broken. So you don't have any more some kind of uh, waves propagating only in the, X, in the X direction or waves propagating only in the Y, in the y direction. So finally, you're, you're able to excite all the scales of the system and uh, have something that is uh, uh, a bit mixed in, in, into all directions. So in order to um, convince you about that, let me also show you the evolution of the spectrum of the system. So what you're going to see here is that the, the spectrum, well, in, initially there is essentially just a condensate, so just a huge peak at zero mode in here. And in the x direction, you've got the, the kx mode. In the y direction, you've got the ky mode. And when we start forcing, you see all these peaks. So all these peaks corresponds to the forcing scale and some harmonic of it. So the first peak here is the eighth forcing scale, and then you've got the 16th and so on. And then after a while, finally, all scales in the system becomes populated. So I'll, I'll, I'll play it again, just to show you again. So you, you start forcing, you have some kind of discrete turbulence in here, where you, where you excite only some discrete waves in the system not only in the kx and ky direction, but also in some uh, in, in a lattice of the k-space. And then after a while, finally, all the other uh, scales, all the other harmonic in the system are populated. And there is more like a, a isotropic, uh, well, the energy spreads isotropically then to all scales. All right, so this is, uh, this is effectively it. Um, if you, if, you, if you want to characterize these more from a point of view of this angle average spectrum, so you take the spectrum into D and you just do an angle average over it, over all direction, this is, this is how the angle average spectrum look like. So initially, well, initially there are essentially no fluctuations, so fluctuations, well, maybe there is some kind of white noise fluctuation of all scales, then you start we start pumping at this forcing scale, which is at very large scale. And these, uh, these um, harmonic uh, uh, create some kind of subharmonics, which are all those peaks of the forcing. And this go on, goes on for a while, for some time. And then finally, at some time, uh, all, all the scales in the system, so the spectrum becomes fully populated. There are no more those peaks. And, and the spectrum looks like, more like a continuum. And if you look at the power law, uh, these power law resemble, well, this spectrum, let's say, resemble a power law that is not far from what you should expect as a prediction of the wave turbulence theory, which is this green line in log loss scale that corresponds to this spectrum here. So um, essentially, the dynamics has different uh, regimes. So first of all, there is a kind of discrete a regime where you've got phonon phonon interaction uh, between the forcing uh, harmonics and 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 uh, and their and its uh, um, uh, higher order harmonics of it, and in these in these initial dynamics, uh, one can see that the energy is slowly transferred through smaller and smaller scale, and then at some point uh, these uh, uh, well the the scales at which the energy starts to pile up. Uh, starts to uh, reach the healing length scales, which is in, in, in this case is more, more or less scales around this, this value here, around seven. So at this, at this term, essentially the, uh, at, at this case, the interaction are no more uh, acoustic, but they start to be um, um, dispersive scales. Uh, I have to say that also those are the scales also where we started the the dissipation term. So, so we, we still don't know if this is due to the healing length scales, so, so this, this dispersive uh, scales or dissipative scales. But when, when energy starts to pile up at these scales, effectively the, the dynamics changes completely from some kind of uh, discrete wave wave interaction to something that looks more like a continuous very quickly. So there's, there's this, uh, I say, very fast transition in, in the dynamics. 
And then these type of dynamics now resemble more to what is the standard picture of uh, wave turbulence theory, where somehow the energy flows uh, through, through, the, through the all scales of the system in a kind of constant way, uh, scale by scale. And, uh, and, uh, and yes, but at the same time, there's, there's also physically some, some uh, uh, well, the emergence of some quasi soliton solutions or some dipole. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's almost it. Um, we also checked the ratio between the linear energy and the nonlinear energy, just to check that uh, we are still in the weekly nonlinear regime, which is what you would um, like to, 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 to be if you, if you want to apply the wave turbulence theory. And, and this is the case. So the, the linear energy of the system is still dominant compared to the other nonlinear energy of the system. So somehow we are still, while, while there are those, those uh, spectrum, we are still in some kind of uh, weakly nonlinear regime. So the wave turbulence theory should be valid. So this Bogolyubov turbulence should be, should be valid um, in this regime. And we, we tried it to, uh, to see what are the spectrum for different forcings. And we saw that uh, by changing the forcing scale of uh, a magnitude term, an order of magnitude term, uh, the spectrum seems to be uh, uh, seems to uh, seem to 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 stay more or less with the same power law, except when we push really the forcing and, uh, um, to be very very intense, and then at that at, at that point the spectrum seems to flatten a bit. Uh, so right, yeah, that's that's basically it. So. Um, I think that this is this is an interesting system because it shows a, a interplay between some kind of initial discrete phonon phonon interaction, and then finally there's a, there's a denser wave turbulence uh, regime, and um, it is interesting from the point of view of the theory because uh, uh, it is uh, from the theoretical point of view it is really uh, difficult mathematically to describe this this phonon phonon interaction from a type a kinetic e e equation type. As uh, as far as I understand, um, it's still not clear when when these transi this transition takes place. So if if it's due to dispersive free particle interaction at this scale, or if it's due to to uh, dissipative scales, which are also introduced in here. And um, yeah, I think that this this could be in principle uh, realized in in two dimensional BECs. And maybe it would also be interesting to see what happens when non-local interaction are considered, or for example, maybe what happens in helium, where you you have also the phonon, the phonon, uh, sorry, not the phonon, the uh, roton minimum occurring in the dispersion relation. So maybe that could uh, that could trigger some 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 uh, uh, well that that minimum could trigger the um, um, the change in dynamics from the wave wave interaction, discrete wave, wave interaction to the more continuous case. So, and with that, uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Davide. Uh, this is a very interesting talk. Um, anybody who would like to, oh, there's plenty of questions. Um, I have no idea who, which one is the first one, but let's start with Ryan. Ryan Dora, please. Sorry, I was providing a, a clapping. Ah, <laughs> I was okay. providing my appreciation for the talk. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, anybody? Uh, Thank you, Ryan. Ryan. Please. Can I ask a question? This is away from uh, Florida. Please. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there, there is a threshold kicking amplitude below which you don't see this uh, transition to more homogeneous sort of turbulence. Hmm. Um, as, so that's, that's really an interesting question that uh, we don't really know how, how to answer at the moment. So what we have uh, observed is that if you, if you increase the, the amplitude of the forcing, essentially your, your, um, accelerating uh, the, 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 the dynamics. So, uh, so the, the time that you have to wait between, uh, um, let's say going from this kind of discrete interaction to the continued interaction uh, becomes smaller. But this is something that you would expect because somehow the, 
nonlinear time scales become well uh, will arrive much earlier because you are increasing the nonlinearity of, of the system. Um, I would probably say uh, um, that there is not really a threshold uh, based on the experience of, on some other system that are that can be described via the wave turbulence theory. It's just a matter of waiting the sufficient amount of time, but uh, but we cannot prove that. So yeah. Yeah, the point is, would less time diverge if the uh, peak amplitude is uh, lower than some critical value? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. Uh, we 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 have we have studied these. Uh, um, well, this type of uh, we have found this a similar type of dynamics in a completely different system, which is uh, called the Fermi Pasta Ulam system in the 1D case. So it's, it's, it's somehow different, but it has also there a similar dynamics in the sense that you go from some kind of discrete uh, wave wave interaction to something that maybe looks more like a uh, um, something that follows a kinetic equation. And, we, and there we didn't study out of equilibrium states. We just studied thermalization. But what we found in that case is that uh, the, 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 the time needed to thermalize um, scales like a power law usually. So, uh, and, and it's a power law uh, uh, that depends on the order of the nonlinearity and, and depends on the, on the intensity of the nonlinear parameter. So in that particular case, it goes like one over epsilon to the power of eight where epsilon is your nonlinear parameter uh, amplitude. Um, so prob maybe here is the same thing. Maybe here you have, you have a, a time delay that scales like a power law, uh, but but yeah, who knows? Okay, thank you. I I really wonder if if some something like that could also be measured in helium, uh, because I think that probably with 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 forks with tuning forks you can excite some Bogolyubov of waves. I I expect so and uh, so. I'm really curious to see if if what is your point of view? Well, to to all the helium experimentalists, yeah. or, or or maybe similar experiments have, have been already done, but but I'm not aware of. I thank you. I think uh, Thorm is was the next one. I'll unmute you. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thanks for the talk, Davide. Um. So, uh, I was going to ask instead of about the amplitude of the driving, if the if you know if there's any effect uh, with the period because. So if I have a 1D kicked rotor, I know that there are sort of resonances and anti-resonances. Mm -hmm. that um, So depending on the period, energy goes to high K quickly or not at all. Uh -huh. Obviously this system's 2D and non-linear, so it's a bit yeah. different to that, but did you explore? I don't think that we explore that from top of memory. I don't think that we changed the oh. period. Um, I would have to ask Umberto that did the, the original simulation, but I don't think that we that we try that. We just changed the amplitude, so effectively this this k here. Uh, mm. But that's that's a good point. So we didn't think about changing the period somehow. Uh, um, I wonder. I wonder if you can always rescale the p. Well, you can find let's say a a relation between the the period and the amplitude. So you you have a way to rescale one into the other. I don't know, but um. Have you got any idea, Tom, on that? I mean, uh, I guess off the top of my head, I would have said it probably makes less difference when it's 2D and nonlinear because you're never going to get perfect resonances and anti-resonances. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised actually by how long your um, Fourier space graph stayed concentrated around the modes. Mm -hmm. It stays concentrated around the modes for a long time. So um, if if you got the forcing frequency right, you might be able to push that pattern further out in k-space before it collapses than for some other frequencies. I don't know mm -hmm. whether that's really all that interesting or not, but um, I just wondered if you looked at it. No, but 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 that's a good point. Yeah, thank you for telling that. All right, thank, thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, Carly. You should be unmuted now. Ah, there you go. Thank you, Davide, for the talk. Um, I was just curious, from the perspective of an experimentalist, um, how the length, if you think about your kicked rotor in an 2 dBc, how the length scale of the trap and the finite size would come into play? Yeah, 
so uh, okay, so I, I I feel really let's say ignorant about about talking about experimental um, uh, parameters, but um, effectively what well the thing that I want to stress is that here we are um, we are really exciting uh, um, um, phononic waves. So you you need to make well I, I don't know if that answered your your question, but you need to make the um, the Bose-Einstein condensate sufficiently large compared to the hidden length. So ideally, let's say you will you will like to have a, a BEC that is maybe a hundred times hidden length in size, so that you have almost a constant uniform density in your bulk. And then you you what we were um, exciting was the eighth harmonic of the size of the system. So we, and we were still basically exciting uh, phononic waves. So and, and, and if you're able to do so somehow and, and, and to have most of your waves into, into the phononic regime, not in the dispersive regime, then, then you could assess these, uh, uh, these, uh, these vocal lube of turbulence. I don't know if, if that answered your, your question, but so I would say that you, need a, you really need a, a very high density because you want, you want scales to be bigger than the healing length. Okay. Does right, it make sense what, what I what I told you or no? Uh, yes, I, I think I think that's sort of sort of gave me it. Essentially, you want you want to a large BEC, which is what we all generally want. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, which which is difficult to get, as far as I understand, right? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> so, but but really, you you would like to excite um, um, waves which which are phononic, so waves. Let's say at least ten times larger than the healing length. I would say that that's that's probably the minimum because you, you want at least a decade, if if not two, if possible. Thank you. Um, then there's one from um, one from Lena. I will unmute you now. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Also. Um, I wanted to ask if you have some more ideas about the um, about the interplay of the three wave and the four wave interactions you were describing, because I could imagine a regime where, say, I start with a huge BEC and then as more of the cascade becomes populated, um, the, the higher momentum states that are outside the Bogolyubov regime start to play a larger role, right? Do, do you have yeah. any thoughts on that? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So this is this is well, we believe that this is what what is causing these transition between a discrete term, discrete uh, let's say wave like interaction to to a more like a, a continuous turbulence. So it is exactly what what you're mentioning. So so when you reach uh, waves which are in well in this plot around that scales, effectively you are in. A, you are in, in dispersive waves, so you you probably have four wave well four waves dominating this this regime, uh, and so that's that's probably what breaks this kind of uh, uh, um, yeah wave wave uh, discrete wave wave interaction. But um, that's that's the only thing that we that that we got. So I I wouldn't know how to describe it mathematically because uh, you. That's that's probably challenging. So you 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 need to look at at uh, uh, interaction, three wave interaction and four wave interaction that they have different nonlinear parameters. So so one is much smaller than the other. But then but then probably you need to find out when 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 the two amplitudes they're comparable so that you can treat them in the same way. But I honestly don't know how to do it. Uh, so so if you have if you have any ideas, I mean it would be nice to hear. From you, but but that's exactly the point. So it's 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 really it's really the three wave four wave, probably the three wave four wave interaction that that leads to these to these uh, drastic change in in the dynamics. Okay, I see. I I, I don't know if I answered your, your question. Yes, it's a, it's like we are also struggling to to um, find out more about that, but I think it's quite close to something that um, we see experimentally, but so okay, okay. we didn't um, we, we didn't yet find a theoretical answer. 
Okay, so so in, in which experimental system are you are you? The one for, uh, the one where you showed uh, Nir Nagun's papers. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So so you're from that. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, yes. In in so in this experiment, in this experiment is is quite is quite interesting because if you look at the scales in here, basically the scales are comparable with the hidden length because scales comparable to the hidden length following these this scale should be here. So that's that's interesting because you see, well you see you see the the, the wave turbulence scaling in 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 this part where you should see the four wave turbulence not the three wave turbulence but the exponent that you measure is is the is the one corresponding to the three wave turbulence so, so so that's that's something that is puzzling me here some some somehow I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying but. So about the um, about the exact exponent, the the predictions we were comparing to had an exponent of three for four wave mixing as well. That's so, right. Yes. So yeah. we were more comparing to that and then trying to explain any differences between okay. three and three point five, and then some new measurements also are a bit closer to three than to. Um, okay. Okay, I understand. But but were you able to measure also scales larger? So so have you got some measurement, let's say on on the left hand side? So so, or can you push the scales to larger and larger scales in your experimental set, setup? It's a bit difficult to realize um, with the finite size, both from the um, from the imaging as well as from. The, the system sizes we can work with, right? So I see. Okay. Okay. So we can more easily probe this four wave regime, but we start with a pure BEC. So we're wondering what happens mm -hmm. as, a, as a result of any, any combination of the two things. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, that's that's anyway. I mean, it's it's really amazing that 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 you can well that 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 experiments are able to to do something like that. So um, also also what I've discussed is in two D. So your your experimental case is is three D. So there might be some kind of extra effect. Maybe I don't know more isotropic uh, turbulence created by vortices. So so there might be differences, but but yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's exciting that that experimentalists are able to to try to measure those those things. Yeah. Are there any further questions? If not, um, I would like to thank Davide for a brilliant talk, and in particular the audience for a very good discussion after the talk. Um, then I'd like to point out that the uh, next seminar will be in our series will be in two weeks. You can find the details on the website. Um, and well, I cannot come up with anything else to say, so I think uh, we're going to we're going to stop here.